on today's episode. I've been fascinated by radio and related subjects for very many, many years, even up to the modern times when I've made projects such as this uh, signal generator, RF signal generator from 35 to uh, 4 gigahertz. Made my own directional antennas for uh, FPV use. One of the problems you face when making these systems is, is testing them. Professional test gear is ridiculously expensive and pretty much over the top for, for hobby use. I'm always on the lookout for different devices to measure and to test things. For example, this is a, a software defined radio which I made a video about, and uh, that you can turn into a spectrum analyzer, which is, which is great. Unfortunately, it doesn't cover the types of frequencies that are used in FPV. Recently, uh, I saw this new power meter from Immersion RC. Though it's for radio control use primarily, it does cover some very useful frequencies. I've also been interested in the LoRa technology, which is low power, long range radio transmissions. And I made this device to be able to send information from, from a tag to a remote unit. This operates on 868 megahertz, which is also covered by this little tester. If you watch the meter whilst I scan the tag, You can see briefly the, the power increase as the device sends its data to the remote site. Let's take a closer look at the operation of this device in its usual environment. Turning the unit on, we get to the main screen, which shows us at the top left there the indicated battery. This should run for around eight hours on, the, on a charge. The DBM reading, the indicator for either peak or average measurement and below we have the milliwatts or microwatts at the moment, the frequency, the duty cycle and a, an analog type display running along the bottom there. If we go to the right we get to the oscilloscope like function and we can see at the bottom an indication of duty cycle and we can change the, uh, the span 20-10 milliseconds all the way up to 160 milliseconds, depending on what you're measuring. We go to the right again, and we have uh, what's known as the Scully mode, where you can set a, a, a zero reading from a, a known good transmitter, say at, uh, at 25 milliwatts. In a race environment, you can go down the line and check that the other transmitters are on the, on the correct power levels. On the main screen, we press, we can get to the frequency, and the little toggle there, we go to the right to select and then we can change our frequency. So we have the upper frequencies for our FPV and then 35 megahertz for the older type radios, 72, 433, 868 as I showed at the beginning, 900, 1.2, 2.4. Once you've selected the frequency that you want, just press the back arrow. Here we can set the peak or average. Average is more useful for analog type systems, so for our FPV measurements. For non-continuous or digital type systems like our transmitter, we will set that for the peak measurement. Attenuation, the device clearly has a, an inbuilt 30 dB max using the internal attenuator for Measuring higher powers, you can obviously fit an external attenuator, in which case you would put the value of that in here. And once again, the, the span, we can now check that our transmitter is sending its signal, which indeed it is. If we go to the right, we can there see the, the, the duty cycle, uh, which for this type of radio is uh, at 50%. If we compare that against a different radio, this is a Futawa using the FAST system. If we turn this on, we can clearly see the difference in, in, the, in the duty cycle with this different type of, of radio. When troubleshooting, it's often a case of looking and checking that you see what you're expecting to see. Once you've used this device on your transmitter and when you know that it's good, 
you then have a reference to be able to go back to when there is something that's not working correctly. If your receiver is equipped with telemetry, then it will be sending that data out so we can check that too. So there with the output from our receiver antennas, the waveform in this instance obviously looks, looks very different. After an unscheduled landing, perhaps you'd want to check that your receiver hasn't been damaged and that the output from both of the antennas is working. Also speaking of uh, unintended arrivals, Remember that the supplied antenna is a 5.8 gigahertz. So what you could do in, in a lost model situation is to put a directional antenna on there and then you'll be able to sweep around and provided that your craft is still transmitting, you should be able to track it down that way. Also speaking of antennas, if you're going to be using this at the lower frequencies very much, it might be a good idea to get one of these uh, wideband type uh, antennas as well to give you a, a more accurate reading at uh, the lower frequencies. And lastly, you probably get, want to get some adapters for different types of, of uh, transmitter output. So here we have the, the little clip-on type connector. Now I actually robbed this out of an old router. You can often find those in, in, in routers. And the more powerful VTXs tend to have these other type of push-on connectors. Uh, this one is supplied with the, uh, with the VTX to transfer that to, to SMA. Let's move on now and test this little VTX and uh, check that it's outputting uh, as advertised. First test now at 25 milliwatts. And there we are, 26 milliwatts, 25 milliwatts, 30 milliwatts. So that's in the right ballpark. Now let's change the power level to the next, which is 50 milliwatts. And there we are, pretty much spot on the 50 milliwatts. Go now to 100. And there we are at 100 milliwatts. So now let's put it up to the highest for this transmitter is 200 milliwatts. And there we are at just over 200 milliwatts. And it's decided to go to sleep. Here we go, 200 milliwatts. Excellent. In conclusion then, a very useful device. Not really that expensive, around 70 euros, 70 dollars. Uh, if it enables you to recover a lost model or finds a problem with a crashed model um, that you weren't aware of, then it has to be money well spent.